Welcome to the Operation Immunization Training Guide. This video will help prepare you for your upcoming health fairs where you'll be administering vaccines to adults and children ages 9 and up. This year, the operation is headed by Jamie Twee and Marvin Carson Saleta. Here is an overview of what you'll be doing with your patient while they're at your station. First, you'll interview the patient, collecting information. After everything is good to go, you can administer the vaccine. After, you will educate the patient document the administration and provide the patient with the documentation. There are several registration forms the patient should have ready and filled out by the time they're at your station, one of them being the general intake form. This will have a lot of information. One thing to point out is that it will have its participant ID. Remember that it consists of 10 digits, the date, the month, day, year, six digits, the time the participant registered in military time, that's four digits, and their initials, the first, middle, and last. Now, if they don't give you one of these names, you will mark that initial with an X. Here's an example. Patient came in January 27, 2016 at 1.30 p.m., and the name is Tommy Trojan. Here is the specific ID for that participant. Remember, it's in military time, so it's 13.30, and the middle initial is an X because the middle name is not given. It is very important that these forms are collected at the end of the participant's visit at the health fair. So be sure to ask the participant whether or not they plan to go to another screening. And if they don't, be sure to collect the form. Another registration form they should have is a vaccine consent form. Here on the screen is how it should look like and a few labels so you know what to look out for. It is very important that this form is signed. Things that the patient must have filled out are marked by a star, most of them at the top section. They also need to fill out this middle section, which has the questions marked with yes or no. You should review these questions when the patient arrives at your station so they really understand what we are asking of them. Once everything is set up and ready to go, we could start the setup process. First, you want to situate your participant in a chair, feet on the ground, and arm relaxed and dangling down. Ask which arm they would prefer. Next, make sure the sharps container is nearby in an easily accessible spot. Now you want to prepare your workstation. Here on the bottom of the screen, we see a laid out napkin, a cotton ball, an alcohol swab, a band-aid, and a pre-filled syringe. This band-aid could actually be already unwrapped before you start administering the vaccine. After you have your workstation set up, ask the patient to roll up his or her sleeves and if they do need privacy, we do have a screen to provide that. Now with the shoulder exposed, locate the acromion process and two fingers below should be the ideal injection site. Grab your alcohol swab and from the middle to the outside, swab in a circular motion. Allow the site to dry up and then you could administer the vaccine. Here's a video so that you could recap on how that whole process should look like. Once you're ready to inject the vaccine, proceed as follows. Although gloves are not required, it may be prudent to use gloves for your protection and patient perceptions. Follow your local standards. Be sure your patient is sitting. Expose the injection site, which is the thickest and central portion of the deltoid muscle. Swab the injection site with alcohol. Allow the alcohol to dry. Note that the sharps container is readily accessible. Hold the syringe near the hub. Insert the needle at a 90 degree angle all the way to the hub of the needle. Maintain contact with the patient at all times. While supporting the patient and the syringe, depress the plunger in a smooth and coordinated manner. Immediately activate the safety device. Rather than immediately activating the safety device, we will remove the needle from the patient's arm. Keep our eye on the needle as we guide it to the sharps container and only there will we activate the safety on the needle. Then we put the whole thing inside the sharps container. Dispose of the syringe and needle in a sharps container. Press the cotton or gauze over the injection site and secure this to the patient using the adhesive bandage. As stated in the middle of that video, once we remove the needle from the patient's arm, we immediately guide it to the sharps container and activate the safety then place the whole thing inside the wastebasket. After that, you will tend to your patient, put on the band-aid, and 
throw all the trash into a biohazard bag. Here are some clinical pearls that you should remember. Just know that hitting bone does not hurt the patient. When you're finding the site, please avoid scars, tattoos, or moles. And one more time, please don't activate the safety while the needle is still inside the patient. Once the vaccine is given and the patient is all cared for, we could begin the counseling portion. Educate the patients regarding what they should expect, such as soreness at the site of injection, and also any possible side effects. You will also provide documentation, including the vaccine information statement form and the flu record card seen on the top right of the screen. This card will be filled out by you. And looking at the consent form once again, the boxes at the bottom of the page must be filled out. This includes the vaccine lot number, the immunizer name, your name, and the participant ID. Additionally, if this is the patient's first time getting a flu shot, or it's been a while, please have them sit down for five more minutes just to make sure they react well to the vaccine. Now that we have knocked out everything you need to know about the paperwork, administering the vaccine, and the counseling portions, we will go over the epinephrine auto-injectors, aka the EpiPens. We will have two pens at each health fair, which are very important in the cases that a patient has a bad reaction to a vaccine. The anaphylactic shock symptoms are included here, wheezing, itching, tightness in chest, dizziness, hives, trouble breathing, and swollen lips and throat. The first thing you have to do is call for help and inject the EpiPen if it is necessary. Here's a video to review on how to use the EpiPen. Whether you need to use EpiPen on yourself or give it to someone else, you can just follow these simple steps. So first things first, you take it out of the tube. Just flip open the yellow cap. Or the green cap. Slide it out and hold it like this. Blue to the sky. Orange to the thigh. Then take off the blue cap. Blue safety release. Never put your hands near the orange tip because that's where the needle comes out. The needle is designed to go through clothing, including jeans, because it must be injected into the outer thigh for quick absorption. If you're helping a young child, like me, hold the leg firmly in place. Once it is, you just do this. Boom. It clicks, so you know it worked. Then you hold it there for three seconds. Then, remove every pen. It says three seconds, however, you must hold it there for 10 seconds. So just count slowly to 10. You'll still see some liquid in there, but don't worry, your EpiPen Junior Auto Injector gave you the right dose, and it has a special feature, the never see needle. Yeah, so the needle's totally covered up, so you should never see the needle. Then rub the spot for 10 seconds while you or someone else gets emergency medical help right away. Now that you have reviewed how to use an EpiPen, this concludes the training video. We expect that upon your arrival at the health fair for your shift, you are ready to go to administer flu shots. If you have any other questions, please contact us at op.immunization at gmail.com. Thanks for watching again, and we're really excited to see you.